ABC Sport welcomes you to Adelaide International Raceway for round two of the Rothmans uh, International Series here on a track which can only be described as blistering and blistering for two conditions, two reasons. A, the temperature, an uh, expected matchman in Adelaide of 35 degrees today and certainly down here at trackside it must be at least 40 degrees. And blistering also because of the pace that we can expect from these drivers this afternoon at f uh, official practice sessions yesterday. Uh, Constanzo setting at a time of 50, uh, 49 seconds flat with only p 0.5 of a second between the top five drivers on the track in top five grid positions. With a, a uh, final build up coming up now from the Rothmans presentation people with umbrella girls and uh, officials on the track ready for the start. It's a 50 lap event and to take you through the excitement with expert descriptions and comments we cross now to our main commentary position Jim Shepherd and Will Hagen. And this is just the lull before the storm. Something like three to four minutes perhaps to go before these Formula 5000s and the two Formula 1 cars, a Formula 1 Ensign to be driven by Englishman Jeff Lees and a Formula 1 Wolf to be driven by the up-and-coming young Irish driver David Kennedy to mix it with the Formula 5s. Last week at Sandown, of course, Alfie Costanzo, the hero of the Sandown crowd, drove to victory in his Lola T430 Hotly pursued, of course, by the two Formula One cars. Lees finished second and David Kennedy finished third. A long shot of the Alfie Costanzo car, actually entered by Alan Hamilton, the Porsche distributor in Victoria, who had a very bad accident at Sandown last September, which caused him to retire. The car has been rebuilt using parts from the wreck and another car he owned. and. In this car, Costanzo drove perhaps the greatest race of his life to win at Sandown last week. He'll be off the pole position, as Bob Vincent has told you, and sharing the front row will be this car, Warwick Brown, and another Lola, car 111. There's a little story attached to that. Warwick thought that he should be driving as car number one. However, due to a local CAMS regulation, he had to uh, take actually number two. But after a lot of haggling, he settled on 111, which has a a little bit of an abstract meaning to it. He has won two Rothman series before and considers he'll win this one, hence the three ones. And also on the front row will be the Irishman, David Kennedy, in his Formula One Wolf. But to take you through the rest of the grid, Will Hagen. It's going to be a great drag race away from the start between these two Formula 5000s on the front row and the Formula One Wolf of the young Irishman, 26-year-old David Kennedy, a very humorous young chap, bright, fiery red hair, and he drives in a fairly similar fashion. On the second row of the grid, again, a mixture of a Formula One and a Formula 5000 car. Jeff Lees, David Kennedy's teammate, will be driving the Ensign. His best time yesterday was 49.6. So to look at times, Costanzo took pole with 49 seconds, half a second under the lap record held by Australian international Formula One driver Alan Jones and representing an average speed of 177 kilometres an hour. Warwick Brown was two tenths of a second slower. Kennedy was half a second off Costanzo's time, three tenths slower than Brown. On the next row of the grid, Lees then on the second row was just a tenth slower than his teammate and they were both repeating those times in the very hot practices early this morning. So Lees then in the ensign number eight starts with a best practice lap yesterday of 49.6, not very f much quicker than the 49.9 set by South Australian driver Johnny Walker in his Lola T332, car number 25. That's it there. The, we just see the white uh, air inlet there for the injection trumpets poking up. Obviously, we'll get a much better look at it as the race goes on. The, you can see the red cowling above the engine as well. Car number 25 of Johnny Walker. Third row of the grid sees Vern Schupen, Australian international driver, resident in America, and he'll be returning there immediately after the Oran Park round to start organising his year's racing program. A long distance driver and uh, also single-seater driver in the States and Can-Am driver, which is this type of car, but now with bodywork. Schupen's best time yesterday in the Elfin was 50.2, and his car number is 11. Beside him was John Davison, who in the second practice session produced his best time, and that second session was slower, so it was an ex a very good time for Davison. It was 50.3, another T332 Lola, and the car number there, the bright yellow car, number 24. On that row beside him, the hard-charging young Australian, 29-year-old Larry Perkins in the second of the two Elfins. That's the car there, the white with the Avis 
sign on the air inlet. That's car number 12 and a sister car to the one being driven by Schupen. And Perkins' time yesterday, 50.4. He actually had a lose at Sandown during the race when he was holding a very strong second place and throwing the car around in very exuberant fashion. They're going away now on what will be effectively three warm-up laps. One initially behind St. Rothman's cars. The second will be behind an official pace car. And then they'll have one final lap on their own at uh, whatever speeds they select. But to go back further on the grid then, there are the Rothman's cars heading the field on this searingly hot track. And temperatures are going to be part of the story of the race. Because not only, you can see there the cars weaving to get their tyre temperatures up to operating. But that is later in the race is going to be a critical problem. Warwick Brown in car 111, which we can see there in the left of screen, is right on the limit in terms of tyre temperatures. He was recording 220 degrees on his left front tyre, and the absolute maximum that that tyre can run at without uh, going off, as they say, without actually chunking rubber and rolling balls of molten rubber off the tyre is 225. So he's within five degrees of disaster. And uh, Brown has got to drive in such a way in the early laps with a full fuel load that he doesn't get the tyres too hot. But the left front tyre is the critical one. Round the left-hand corner at the back off the straight and then also onto the banking. And the banking is this bit in the right-hand end of the circuit as you're looking at it there. That's ca called motorcraft, the top right-hand corner. And then it loops around in a slightly banked fashion into Stillwall Corner and then brings them back onto the straight. That straight's just over a kilometre long. The circuit's 2.4 kilometres all around. Then they go round the back. They're actually in the S's now. They come down a short straight, which is Shell, into the Uni Royal S's through BP Corner, that, which is that one there, BP, and then the right-hand one where the Rockland's cars are just disappearing. So that's the 2.41 kilometres. As I say, tyre temperatures are going to be one problem. Alfie Costanzo is another, whose temperatures have been right up and uh, who are going to have a critical problem. But of course, engine temperatures too are potentially uh, going to go off the clock. Jim Richards is one whose car has been running hot even under cool conditions, and under these conditions, uh, Jim is quite worried about the possibility of the right, another. Richards driving car number nine, John Wright driving car number 76, and is another who's been blowing head gaskets. And uh, he too wonders whether the car's going to last the race of these hot conditions. But there's Warwick Brown getting the, the tyres up to operating temperature because just as they don't want to overheat them, they equally would be disastrous to start the race with them too cool. The first time they hooked it into a corner, the car would go for a big skate off into the uh, outfield. You can see the Formula One cars in there behind them. That's the ensign, number eight. That's Jeff Lees, the 29-year-old Englishman. That's uh, number 12 is uh, Larry Perkins. John Davison there in 24. A very even field, this. It should be an excellent race, a great race, I think, between Costanzo and Brown, Kennedy and Lees. I think they'll be in a bunch together at the front. Further back, Johnny Walker, Vern Schupen, John Davison, Larry Perkins, even Terry Hook, uh, all in there with a fighting chance of making up a highly competitive dice for the sort of second group. But Alfie Costanzo, the man who scored no points in the series last year, he scored points in the series in 1970. Been around Australian racing a long time. 36 years old, diminutive Italian born from Australian resident who lives in Melbourne. A man with a great heart, always cheerful, and it was a resoundingly popular victory for Alfie last weekend at Sandown Park and a richly deserved one too. competitive with the Formula One cars throughout the series. His sponsor, though, doesn't think so. Hamilton feels that the Formula One cars will run away and hide. And this circuit in certain sections, such as this here, and we're looking there at car number six of uh, David Kennedy, the Irishman. That's a Formula One wolf, wolf built for Jody Schechter in 1977. And other than for the ground effect cars that they're running now is a very quick car indeed. The only thing that would differentiate it between uh, 
Formula One performance and the way it's going here is the fact that they're limited in the tyre compounds that they're being allowed to run and also that Kennedy hasn't had the experience of the top Formula One pilots, but he's a man on the way up. Further down on the grid, from the on the fourth row, we have Terry Hook in car number 15 and Graham McRae, three times former series winner and current reigning Australian champion driver. They have times of 50.5 and 50.8. McRae's had a lot of bother with his car number one. Uh, just can't get power and also won't rev over 7,000 revs when it should go to eight or eight and a half. On the fifth row, we have John Wright in 76, Jim Richards in nine and Rob Butcher in car number 10. On the sixth row, John McCormack, who's been having some bother and was late to practices yesterday. He's in car seven and beside him, Colin Bond in car number 14. Colin also had a, a badly behaving car, a lot of misfiring and very much down on power. That's Bond's car we're looking at there. He gets here actually only by virtue uh, of getting a fuel pump drive belt for that car about 20 minutes ago and, and loaned to him by the man that's sitting alongside him on the grid, John McCormack in car seven. And what's more, the Bond team protested against McCormack's car last weekend, feeling it wasn't in the spirit of the regulations. And yet this weekend, McCormack has come back and lent them a part that was vital and without which Bond would not have been able to start. So Colin Bond's there, but had a fairly fraught practice session and his time of 53.3 as McCormack's 52.4 do not represent their potential around the circuit. On the seventh row, Chaz Talbot drives car number four. David Salt Walter, the American, drives car number 77, a car that he says he'll not drive again in the series uh, if it doesn't go well today. He says it's an old car, it's not competitive and he's not used to being not competitive, but he's trying to uh, hire or to uh, buy a car for the remaining two races in the series. We'll tell you more about that later. Mel McEwen is beside Saltwater. Saltwater, of course, was the veteran of a fiery, fearsome accident at uh, Indianapolis in 1973 when he was very badly burnt. On the eighth and final grid row, we have Rob Creasy in car number 16 you're looking at there. That's a Burana 273, an Australian-made car with only a 1.6-litre engine. And beside him is Stephen Fraser in car number 35 car called a Cicada, that's it there. So it is a 20 car grid and all bodes well for a very competitive hard fought race under these oppressively hot conditions. They'll be away in just a moment, but the real interest between the three litre pucker thoroughbred Formula One racing cars, car number six and number eight of David Kennedy from Ireland and Jeff Lees from England, uh, the five litre Formula 5000 cars are playing about to go, Jim Shepard. Dixter got the flag. Has followed this thunderous action, the charge to turn number one. Brown got the better of the start, but Costanzo's running with him, the red car centre of screen. Brown's dropped back. Davison in the yellow car left of screen, looking for a run through on the inside. Lee's got a chop, and it's Brown around the outside to lead into turn number one. Brown in car 111 ahead of Alfie Costanzo. That's what he planned to do, and it came off. But it was a desperate Dyson duel to turn number one. So as they sweep through the S's, Warwick Brown, the defending series champion in car 111, leading Alfie Costanzo. Jeff Lees and John Davison in order behind. And Warwick Brown onto the oval. Jeff Lees and let's go back and follow Warwick Brown on his first run around the oval with uh, a gap of some 50 metres perhaps on Alfie Costanzo and the rest of the pack strung out now over something like a quarter of a lap as Brown completes lap number one ahead of Alfie Costanzo. John Davison got off to a, a miraculous start to be up where he is in that yellow car running fourth, but Jeff Lees in car number eight has come through into third position. Costanzo looks for an inside run on Brown on turn number one is into their second lap. Brownie watching his mirrors, saw the move coming and uh, took up as much room as he could, but he was noticeably sideways into the first of the S's and Costanzo was hustling him along with the first car off. Look at the left rear tyre. Car number six is the David Kennedy um, Wolf. Formula One looks as though he's had a spin. We've only got the aftermath of whatever did happen, but the tyre completely gone, the back left corner, uh, back left tyre, as uh, David Kennedy off to a shocking start in this race, and that obviously will be the finish of his run. I noticed him in the uh, bank section, Jim, on that first lap. He was about two metres off the line of the other cars and fighting the car, and it obviously went flat either in the banking or approaching it. 
for wretched luck to David Kennedy out uh, after only a lap or so as once again Alfie Costanto puts the nose up on the inside of the Brown bowler but uh, Brown I think is expecting all of this he hoped to get into the lead and Brown is a, a, a renowned front runner he likes to be in the lead all the way he doesn't mind the pressure from behind and he's getting parts of it today Warwick Brown driving the Team VDS Lola out of her uh, crashing his car in uh, a warm-up session at Sandown and not starting in the race, still our race leader as they're coming around for lap three. And as we've lost Kennedy from fifth place, we've lost John Davison into the pits from fourth position. So the race order now is uh, Brown from Costanzo and Lees, then Johnny Walker, then Larry Perkins, John McCormack, Vern Schuppen. Going slowly to the pits also is Jim Richards. And as, we, as we'll come back to that, we've got um, one car into the pits. Salt Let's water. After the salt water's little uh, retirement, it appears, because it appears as though Costanzo may, just may, have got his nose in front of Brown. We'll go back to that. Now, Brown is still up there. Uh, almost lost the lead at the end of the main straight. And obviously, Costanzo is going to be pegging away at Brown, particularly at the end of the straight. It's probably the best passing uh, position on this very, very tight track. Another car into the pits, and I don't know whether this is the heat or just bad luck or what. Jim Richards into the pits there, car number nine, going fairly slowly for the last half lap or so, and into the pits. We receive uh, from Alfie Costanzo at 84, hot on his hammer. In third place behind him is number eight, Jeff Lees. He's firing very hard indeed. Fourth place, Johnny Walker, the local boy. Fifth place, Larry Perkins. Sixth in car number seven, John McCormack, his car going better than it was going in practices. Followed then by Vern Schuppen in 11. 15 is Terry Hook, also going better than he's gone for a while. And Rob Butcher going well in number 10 is the next. Brown still our race leader, still through the S's. You'll notice that Alfie Costanzo is not attempting to get too close to him because if you get uh, into the slipstream, there won't be much cooling air going over his own car, which will probably lead to his own Lola overheating. So he hurries Brown along at the end of the main straight, but drops off at least enough to make sure that there's a, a reasonable gap between himself and Brown. So that he won't be running with sort of overheating problems. Brown, our race leader, still ahead of Alfie Costanzo, and a lot of charges still coming as uh, John Davis from the yellow car has rejoined the race. And 1.9 seconds cover the first three cars. Warwick Brown, Costanzo, and the Englishman Jeff Lees. Jeff Lees, yeah, running in the car number eight, will go back to the little later with a drive. Well worth watching because he's decided to play a weight stage in this race. He's running in third position behind the, these two cars. Warwick Brown is uh, 111, just coming along on the inside there of Stephen Fraser's Cicada, blowing a lot of smoke as well. Brown, our race leader, ahead of Costanzo, closing up on the field. Lees is the third car. Uh, in a beautifully handy position. He's only some uh, 100 metres behind the top two. Brown are off the oval as we pick up John McCormack, running back in uh, fourth position, in fifth position, I'm going, around the oval. Uh, John McCormack, who had uh, a lot of bad luck at Sandown, expected sixth position, not fifth, and also a little trail of smoke coming out of the back of the McCormack car. As once again, we'll pick up this great charge down the straight. It's probably the most spectacular feature of the Adelaide International Raceway. Car 35 Fraser had to pull wide to let Johnny Walker through. And Fraser in fact is one of the cars that was spoken of at the drivers meeting this morning where they were told to keep to the left down the main straight. But on the other hand, if you saw him getting a blue flag there, if they have to be flagged too many times during the race, they will be black flagged and pulled out of the race because he's not on the pace and he may hinder the leading cars when they're lapping. Great drill down the back straight. Alfie Costanzo uh, in fact, has got past Warwick Brown. So our new race leader is Alfie Costanzo off the oval into the main straight. A few lengths clear of Warwick Brown, who uh, possibly now will sit back and just await his opportunity. But as he said before, watch for car number eight. Jeff Lee's running in third position and right behind Warwick Brown. There's nothing the matter with the Brown car, nothing the matter with Warwick Brown. He's just decided to uh, perhaps get off the pace for a while as we pick up car number 12, uh, Larry Perkins, in one of the Anson T. Norman cars. But our new race leader and the winner of the first round of the Rothman series, Alfie Costanzo, through the S's, will wait now and see whether he can open up any sort of a gap on Warwick. Which he is doing, in fact, even at this early stage. Look at the gap he's pulled out on Warwick Brown and look how Lees is hammering Brown. So perhaps Brown has got tyre problems. Certainly, Costanzo is pulling away even at this time. He will have pulled out more than half a second on this one lap, although through the banking, uh, Brown gets through, the, through there very quickly and pulls out quite a bit of ground on both Lees and pulls in ground on Alf Costanzo. 
but down the straight, look at the Formula One car tucking in up close to Brown. Look at him, Lee's coming down the straight and very nearly looking for a way down the inside under brakes, but uh, he hangs back. So Costanzo, followed by Brown, followed by Lees, is the race order as they complete eight laps. They're on their ninth now in a 50-lap race, and this circuit is 2.41 kilometres around. And absolutely flat as a billiard table, the Adelaide International Raceway. And a reminder that they are running in wretched heat. It must be around about the century. Costanzo, all eight and a half stone of him, he's jockey-sized. Uh, roaring away in that car number 84, the Alan Hamilton Nola, and putting a little bit more of a gap now into Warwick Brown. There's about 50 metres between himself and Brown, and another 50 metres back to Jeff Lees in car number 8, the Formula 1 ensign. Coming up to, uh, to pass uh, uh, John Davison, who has been into the pits very early in the race and has now rejoined. 36 years old, Alfie Costanzo leads 29 years old Warwick Brown and 29-year-old Englishman, Jeff Lees. A great credit to Costanzo, the way he's been performing last weekend in this, and for that matter, the way he performed, subject to mechanical problems in last year's series, because he probably only gets about seven or eight or nine races a year at the very most, and very few drivers can maintain race-winning form on that sort of infrequency. But Alfie does it, he's absolutely flying, and he said last week when questioned about it, Oh, he said 10 laps and I'm back in the groove. I know exactly where to break, turn into the corners and everything. I've got everything right. So Alfie Costanzo again leading the Rothmans International Series. He led all the way last week in Sandown to take out round one. And now he's opened up a nice break, but it's not a, a big break actually over Warwick Brown. There's only 50 metres or so in it. As he swings through that tricky right hand, you see the tail go out. Warwick Brown and... The other Lola, car 111 in second position, and Jeff Lees now has dropped off the pace a little bit. The Formula One ensign back into third place, but he's well within sight of the leaders. You'll notice the suspension working on both the Lolas as they swing on that reverse camber entry to the oval. And in fact, it is Costanzo pulling inch by inch away from Brown on the faster sections of the circuit, but around this banked oval section, if Brown closes up, picks up perhaps 10 or 15 metres, but Alfie in the Alan Hamilton Lola comfortably in front. Warwick Brown still in second position, car 111, and Jeff Lee's back in third. Alfie Costanzo on his way perhaps to his second successive win in the 1979 Rothmans International Series. Yes, down from the pits, uh, Jim and Will had a word with the pit crews of uh, Salt Walker, and he's uh, had a disaster here today. He's going ahead faster. He's uh, very upset with the car. Very upset with the way it was running in practice yesterday. Even his partner wasn't happy with it. But as you said earlier, Will, he was in dire straits. He's going to hit gasket. Very, I'd be very surprised if we see him competing again in the rest of the series. Well, that, that is a shame because uh, Salt Walter, perhaps in a very uncompetitive car, has certainly added some colour to the series. And just John McCormack also has uh, come into the pits and a lot of furious work going on his car. But the most interesting thing at this moment is this duel, this continuing duel for the lead, and after 10 laps there are our placings. Alfie Costanzo, car 84, leading from Warwick Brown, car 111, and Jeff Lee's car number 8, going through the very fast, but uh, you must watch it, S section at the back of the circuit. And further back behind them, we just saw a flash of a yellow car on the screen, and that is John Davison back in the race, but one lap down, but immediately behind them, in 4th and 5th place, a car numbers 25 and 12, keeping fairly close company. That's Johnny Walker and Larry Perkins, two local drivers, although Perkins has been campaigning overseas. And uh, that's um, John Davison. And just behind him on the banking is this dice, but for fourth and fifth place, very close company indeed, between Johnny Walker in 25 and uh, Larry Perkins in number 12. They'd just be in the bottom of the screen in a moment. There they are. Now, this is a good dice for fourth and fifth place. Going into the right-hander down the bottom there, Perkins, one of the most exuberant drivers in the series, gets this car very sideways in a lot of places. Johnny Walker, very quick, had problems at Sandown last weekend. Went out on the 17th lap, but had been holding a good place and had equal fifth-fastest lap time during the race. That's the leader. 
Costanzo. And we've just heard another report from the pits that Warwick Brown has been continually signalling to his pit crew and pointing to his tyres, obviously indicating that his tyres are playing up. Obviously, he can't afford a pit stop at this early stage of the race. He's obviously hoping for the best, but it seems incredible that they've started to go off or anything else happened to them so early in the race. Our race leader, Costanzo. A very, very fast right-hand sweeper at the end of the main straight. Brown is not losing any real ground, particularly on this section. And like Costanzo in the early laps is staying right back out of the slipstream so he won't uh, run into any overheating problems, but has been pointing to his tyres. Maybe has some problems. Costanzo, 84, onto the oval. Brown following right behind him, and Jeff Lee's in a beautiful box seat position in car number eight, running in third position. Yes, I agree. That uh, sums it up nicely. A, 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 an excellent box seat position for Jeff Lee's, using only about a third of his potential full fuel load because his Formula One car is designed to do about uh, 250 kilometre races, and this is very much shorter than that. He also has a car purpose built for the job much more so than the 5000s and he does not have the same potential problems with tyre temperatures. So that's Chaz Talbot, actually one of the lapped cars, number four, but just in behind him is Jeff Lees. There he goes, Lees finding his way around him. This team actually uh, air freighted that car out for Lees. It's an ensign built by and designed by Morris Nunn in England, the man that uh, one stage had Chris Amon driving for it. My goodness gracious, Lees way offline there and only now has just managed to clear himself from Chaz Talbot but uh, yes Morris Nunn uh, built those cars and in the days of Chris Amon a couple of years ago was doing some remarkably fast times indeed Clay Regazzoni also drives for Ensign but uh, that team has landed their second Wolf car as we look at Costanzo still in the lead with 16 laps completed now on their 17th lap uh, has landed their second car in England. It was running late, and so they air freighted this ensign out for Jeff Lees to drive. But for the next two races in the series, it's quite likely that Lees will be in a sister car to that of David Kennedy's, a Formula One Wolf, not the ensign. And spare a third of these drivers working so hard, having to concentrate all the time on a circuit that demands concentration all the way, and in really appalling weather conditions. It must be something like 120 or more in the cockpits. Drivers, oh, and a big blow up for John McCormack. It appears he's been into the pits now twice. Well, perhaps I'll withdraw that, not a blow up, but that cloud of smoke obviously means that something is definitely not right in the engine department. Perhaps he needs some of those Unipart products, Jim, to. <laughs> it could be that. <laughs> they make bits to do most things in a motor car, and uh, as I say, it looks as though he could do with some of them at the moment. As we look again at Alfie Costanzo, Warwick Brown there just being. Uh, sandwiched a bit as one a lap car was in between himself and Costanzo through that corner and he had to drop back just a touch. Costanzo looking very good at Sandown. He built up a buffer of up to about 13 seconds between him and the English chargers, in the, uh, or British chargers, I should say, in the Formula One cars. It finally finished at five seconds at the end of the race. This, section, this corner is interesting because it's a reverse camber there and drivers have to stay in pretty tight not to fall in off the camber and then that gives them a very bad entry onto the bowl. The Formula One cars get their power on very early in that section of circuit. And the heat conditions are certainly going to affect not only the cars and tyres but drivers near the finish of this race because the, uh, the strain of driving incredibly high cockpit temperatures means that uh, some of these drivers could tire badly towards the finish and that's not a, any sort of a pun on what could possibly happen to their their tires and I mean rubber tires. Stanzo weaving onto the oval just uh, pop the tail out for a second but caught it immediately and down the back straight is just uh, perhaps another 10 meters or so away from Warwick Brown. There's not nothing in it. If anything, Jeff Lee's running in third position has dropped back a fraction. Car 25, Johnny Walker onto the oval on the same lap as the leaders, not too far behind, about a third of a lap, and still well within a, in reach of uh, closing towards the finish of this 50 lap race. This is fourth place to Johnny Walker in car number 25, but he now actually has dropped back to fifth because Larry Perkins has got past him. Larry Perkins is 12 in front of Johnny Walker in 25. They're having a carve up earlier and now have changed position. 3.3 seconds the gap now, back from second placed Brown to third placed Lees, and as you can see, the uh, 
gap from first to second is very small indeed as Costanzo looks very good. At Sandown he judged his race beautifully. He was able to maintain a good buffer between himself and his fellow competitors and any time they pulled out any ground on him he was able to uh, reply very quickly on the next lap. That I think was Larry Perkins getting past Jeff Lees. Yes, Jeff Lees is slowing, I think. That's John Davison, and further back on the banking. But no, it's Chaz Tall that we're getting confused with. So the race order, just to clear it, at the end of 20 laps is Costanzo in 84 from Brown on 111. Jeff Lees in 80 is in third place. Fourth place, Larry Perkins. Fifth place, uh, Johnny Walker in sixth place, Bert Schupen in 11. And our race leader in full flight down the back straight with a wall of cars behind him. Just to check on the placings after 20 laps. Costanzo still leading from Warwick Brown and Jeff Lees. Now coming onto the straightaway again to close up on an ailing Colin Bond. Jeff Lees is the driver most people are watching because uh, perhaps he has bided his time long enough. It is about the halfway mark. In fact, we're closing on the halfway mark. 20 laps down, a 50 lap race. And Jeff Lees could be perhaps biding his time as Costanzo is still doing it well in front. Coming up to lap, car number 10, Rob Butcher in a T332 Lola, and also Terry Hook in car number 15. Butcher having, oh, there's Hook running off the circuit, actually, just back there, car number 15. There he is, just regaining the circuit now. Uh, and in fact, that's 14, 15. Uh, the Cole so, Trangrove, uh, in fact, uh, 34 was uh, the guy who did a little bit of grass cutting, but he's back in shape. I think he moved over a little bit too hurriedly for the faster cars, and he's uh, certainly trailing to build Cole Trengrove, a, a very, very enthusiastic amateur driver from Adelaide, out of contention today, but still very much enjoys his motor racing. And still the duel continues at the front of the field with Costanzo in 84, uh, with some lap cars behind him, including Rob Butcher. The actual race order is Costanzo in 84, Warwick Brown in 111, and Jeff Lees in car number eight. But there are many, many cars being lapped. And it is getting a little bit confusing for spectators, particularly as the odd car or two keeps dropping into the pits and then rejoining the race. A great gaggle of cars behind Costanzo is, has everything going for him. He's got a clear track. He seems to be avoiding all the uh, cars being lapped. Warwick Brown, in fact, we know is being held up back in the traffic. Costanzo now would be a good 200 all on meters in front. And I wonder if the hero of the Melbourne crowds and fast becoming the hero of the Rothman series crowds can do it again. The first up win at Sandown last week appears to be on his way to a second successive win. And Warwick Brown, I think you'd agree, Will, is the driver who must be feeling a little bit desperate. He must pull off at least a second in this race to stand any chance of pulling off the series. Yes, well, he certainly can't afford to let Costanzo take uh, yet another victory because that's going to give him 20 points with the possibility of earning another 25. Uh, and certainly he'd have to be then relying on some sort of form of problems with... Um, Costanzo in the remaining two rounds and so far it's run ultra reliably rather as Warwick ran last year but hasn't so far done this year. His error of course was to uh, on a warm-up practice session early last Sunday morning at Sandown was to run off the circuit but look at Lees uh, that's uh, Stephen Fraser's Cicada number 35 that's been running at the tail end and has now parked the car. And what I was saying about Warwick Brown was that uh, he ran off circuit in the early part of last weekend and uh, the team have now had to call on their old tub or the monocoque chassis and build components onto it. They've got a couple of amusing signs up in the, in the, the van, Warwick Brown's van. One says, the old girl's out again, uh, no further stocks of this model available. And the other one is that they've got a sign up saying Warwick Brambilla, referring to Vittorio Brambilla, a man who's crashed more motor cars than most people have breakfast. He said, Warwick Brambilla, an elephant went across the track and I swerved to avoid him. And so the, the pit crew have taken fairly lightly the fact that Warwick last weekend wrote off a monocoque tub that's worth probably two and a half thousand dollars. And he in fact is losing ground to Costanzo and very close now to having Lees right on his hammer and looking for a way around. And as Brown went past his pits just a few seconds ago, he again, we've got uh, another driver off. It's one of the Ansett cars by the look of it. Long way, we'll try and check on that number. 
that, I think, is uh, Vern Schupen. But look at the, the golden back. helmet. We'll come back and check on Vern Schupen as he, if he uh, is out of the. I say he's definitely out of the race, and just double check whether it's he or his teammate Larry Perkins, our race leader. Alfie Cassanzo now has a lead of possibly 250 metres over Warwick Crown with a gap of perhaps 100 metres to Jeff Lees. It's nothing in a race of this duration. The cars at the halfway mark, 25 laps to go, uh, can easily close the gap on the race leader, Costanzo. It is Vern Schupen that's off. Larry Perkins in number 12, still holding fourth position in front of Johnny Walker in number 25 in fifth place. And, of course, Larry, if he's to improve on his position, has to set his sights on Jeff Lee in the ensign car number eight. Alfie Costanzo isn't just a top racing driver today. He's incredibly lucky. All the way around the circuit, he's managed to get to corners just ahead of the cars being lapped. He's had virtually a clear run for the last 10 or 15 laps. While Warwick Brown continually has been running into thick traffic and losing ground, he's not exactly... Uh, losing ground at the moment. Warwick Brown, car 111, running in second position. In fact, I would guess that he's perhaps closing a fraction over the last uh, two or three laps. Not dramatically so, just enough as uh, Brown goes underneath the lap to uh, Coltringo, who's probably been lapped now about three times, but he's still in there trying. And I think a lot of the drivers way back in the field being lapped are running in the thought that in this heat and under the strain of such competition because this is motoring at its electrifying best that perhaps some of those top cars could drop out. Series points were awarded down to 10th place and it's nice always to have your name in the record books. Brown onto the oval again and we'll perhaps get the watches on him shortly. He's basically the length of the back straight. That is the back straight of the oval behind Costanzo which is only about 200 odd metres. I think he's perhaps closed a fraction. This corner coming off the oval into the main straight, traditionally in weather such as this, starts to break up at that point near bottom of the screen. A lot of rubber being laid around, as you can see, particularly there off the banking on the right line, the fast line, and uh, the circuit will become increasingly slippery over the 120 kilometre distance of the race, which is going to take them 40 odd minutes, 41, 42 minutes or thereabouts. Brown in this earlier 332 Lola than the car of Costanzo's, which is a 430 model, and also Brown would have been in the later model, but of course for writing the car off last weekend. I think probably in another two or three laps we'll have a clearer indication as to whether Warwick Brown is in fact closing a little bit on our race leader. Alfie Costanzo just going through that right-hander at the end of the finish straight now. Alfie, on the other hand, probably with a nice, comfortable lead, is uh, acting to pit signals. They perhaps asked him just to slow down a fraction, conserve the car, as Warwick Brown in 1-1-1 just appears to be making a charge. It's 5.5 seconds, in fact, the gap between those two, Costanzo and Brown. Alf getting a, <laughs> a good run through there, but helped a bit by forcing his way through and making it pretty apparent to the Barana that he was lapping at Creasy from Western Australia, but uh, he was coming through irrespective, and Creasy, of course, had seen him in the mirrors and moved out pretty wide to let him through. So Alf strides off down the straight with this lead after 20, 30 laps now on his 31st in a 50-lap race of five and a half seconds over Warwick Brown in second place, whose lead over Jeff Lees is about one second. After 30 laps, the situation in this 50 lap second round of the Rothmans International Series for Stanzo, Brown and Lees. has been that situation for about the, about the last 20 or so laps. Stanzo probably feeling super confident. He knows now he can win these races with uh, not too much trouble. Let's see if we can pick up Warwick Brown. Here he is in second position. Still well within range of the race leader Costanzo and Jeff Lees is still sitting in a beautiful position in third place but as the race unfolds and gets nearer to the finish I think it'll be necessary to make a charge at least 10 laps from the finish we're getting fairly close to that Let's look further down through the field there are some names of interest apart from uh, the ones up at the front 
We've mentioned in fourth and fifth place, Larry Perkins and Johnny Walker. Sixth place has Rob Butcher going extremely well in car number 10, a car that he got only about a fortnight ago. He's followed by Terry Hook in 15, and then a man everybody loves and who is so well known is Colin Bond in car 14, running there quite well in eighth place. And behind him in ninth place is Graham McRae. So we might try and have a look at those for you. Eighth and ninth, Bond in 14 and Graham McRae in one. 18 laps to go in this 50 lap race. And still pretty close company up in front between two Formula 5000 cars, both Lolas, in first and second place, designed and built in England. And in fact, they, were, they are models of the type that Australian dr race driver and uh, designer Frank Gardner track tested and in fact sorted out for Eric Broadley, the proprietor of Lola Racing Cars in the days when their early Formula 5000 cars were pretty disastrous in terms of handling. Frank got taken into Lola and uh, very soon suggested some chassis and suspension modifications that made the cars work pretty well. And the 332 and the 400 and the 430 were the result of that. Not all of them is quite as good as the 332 but those two cars from the Lola factory leading this thoroughbred Formula One car as John Davison again goes to the pits in the Ranger truck rental sponsored car number 25, uh, number 24. Through the, or into the S's goes Costanzo, our race leader. Warwick Brown is still at five odd seconds behind him. Jeff Lees, if anything, has closed a fraction on Warwick Brown. So it's all between these three drivers the drivers back in uh, fourth, fifth and sixth position, I'm sure, are uh, out of it. And we've got uh, a shot down in the pits. I don't know whether Bob Vincent can uh, give us a comment on this. Colin Bond into the pits with the wing awry at the back of his car. He's pulled in just in front of John Davison and he's getting attention there of the fairly um, the unskilled type, as you can see. The side wing being torn away, spewing water out the back. Colin Bond, the man running in ninth place, I think it was car number 14 but into the pits now bad luck for him because very early in the race last weekend at Sandown after enjoying the experience of getting back into this type of motor car on the second lap actually he went out of that race and now on the 34th lap his 34th lap he's into the pits in this one a car that was running very roughly on Friday when he was testing here and then yesterday in practices didn't let him get a really quick lap time <clears throat> well, it, didn't, it wasn't very clear from the shot we had whether uh, Colin Bond was about to stay in or get out of the car. Uh, they were certainly checking his harness. I wouldn't like to be driving that car very quickly in that sort of shape. Well, the major thing now is that Warwick Brown's gone back to third place. Lees is up into second place. Jeff Lees, car number eight, moving forward, and uh, we'll get gaps for you. So on lap 35, Warwick Brown, no, lap 34, Brown had slipped back to third place Jeff Lees now in second place car number eight and out in hot pursuit of Alfie Costanza now this is where the race craft and the race tactics are going to start to come in the next 15 laps what can Lees do in a car not as affected by race day temperatures as Alfie Costanza's out in front has Costanza with a gap of about five odd seconds I'll give you the gap exactly got enough of a lead over Jeff Lees the gap gap is coming up in just a moment and I'll give it to you. In fact, it's much more than five and a half. It's 9.1 seconds. We'll watch this gap now throughout the remaining 15 laps as Lees charges there out of the banking down the straight. 9.1 seconds, the, the gap he's chasing. So about two thirds of a second a lap, quite achievable and uh, could be the race. Well, this is almost a repeat of what happened at Sandown last week. Alfie Costanzo on his way to Warwick Brown, by the way, we know has gone into the pits. Warwick Brown into the pits. He has been pointing to his tyres for quite some time, so that's dropped him way back and leaves Costanzo right out in the lead, well over nine seconds in front of Jeff Lees. It's a matter now of whether Lees has the uh, capacity under his foot. He certainly has it upstairs in the head to catch up to the race leader Costanzo. Here's Warwick Brown getting out of the car. Bad luck if uh, this is another retirement. That puts Larry Perkins up into third place, car number 12. Johnny Walker fourth in number 25. Terry Hook fifth in 15. 
Sixth, Rob Butcher in car number 10, an outstandingly good performance. Seventh, Graham McRae in one, and Bond would have been next, but of course he too is in the pits in a race that was expected to produce a lot of retirements under these difficult conditions. Costanzo, a buffer of nine seconds back to the pursuing Jeff Lees. There's still a tremendous amount of interest in this race. Costanzo being chased, hotly pursued by Jeff Lees, but possibly the uh, race is too close to the finish for Jeff Lees to do much about it. Costanzo has uh, quite an enormous lead, and Will Hagen has just checked it. He's pulled in a second, 8.2 seconds now, first to second place. It's less than a second a lap, and that's easily achievable under these conditions. So Alfie Costanza, he'll be advised by his pits at Sandown last weekend when this happened. He usually replied by pulling out another second on the following lap, which would be this one. But let's see what he does. We'll get a gap on the next lap. But Costanzo now trying as cleanly and as efficiently as possible to go quickly without overstraining the car. Let's cross down to uh, Bob Vincent in the pits for some the latest on what's all the drama down there. Thanks, Jim. Well, the story is, of course, all the news on uh, Colin Bond and Warwick Brown, two of the Australian favourites, who are now definitely out of today's race. Colin Bond's, uh, Colin Bond's engine simply boiled. The, hut, the car couldn't run in the conditions. The conditions just got too hot, and it uh, just cooked, as the head mechanic said. And uh, Warwick Brown, well, they won't tell us what's happened to his car. Obviously, Warwick's very upset. He immediately got out of the car as soon as it arrived into the pit, so it was definitely something very drastic. I've tried to uh, talk to him about it, but he doesn't want to comment. No doubt we'll find out a little bit more about that a bit later, but definitely Colin Bond and Warwick Brown out of this race. Well, it's a tragedy, but here's the, the, the coming triumph, perhaps. Alfie Costanzo onto the oval again with Jeff Lees, that fiery young Englishman in the Formula One ensign, chasing him hard. Uh, theoretically, it is possible for him to catch up and take the lead, but boy, what a job if he can do it. Costanzo onto the finish straight, so he's got well over half the... Uh, in fact, Lees, as we haven't seen him, has just dropped back so far. Quite obviously, something has gone awry there. We have to check on Jeff Lees. Costanzo has gone through. And this is definitely not Jeff Lees. So we've got more the drama, as it appears. Costanzo, if we have picked it, and uh, Lees is in trouble, as he's so far in front that all he has to do is finish, and he's won round two. Well, the gap had gone back, Jim, from that 9.1 to 8.2. Then it was 10 seconds, the next lap. Uh, and that was far too much for Alf to pull back just on the basis of putting his foot a little bit harder into it. So. Um, we have lost Jeff Lees, which means then that Larry Perkins is in second position, number 12, and in third place is Johnny Walker, 25. There's oh. Jeff Lees' car, Qu question answered, uh, with some sort of malfunction, obviously, pushed off into the scrub, and Jeff Lees out of the car. Well, that's a there tragedy for uh, the two Formula One drivers. You remember David Kennedy was out, I think, in lap two with a blown tyre. We think he may have spun. There's the latest up to date with 10 laps to go. Alfie Costanzo, our leader in car 84. Larry Perkins running second in the answer team Elfin car 12. And Johnny Walker, the Adelaide Star car 25, running in third position. Well, Alfie Costanzo is now going to have a break or something go uh, technically or mechanically amiss to lose this race. Indeed. Uh, it's, it would be awfully funny to see his team mentor, the man that put him into the car, uh, Alan Hamilton down the pits, because only about five laps into the race last week, and Hamilton was storming around with Alf out front, lots of pressure from behind, saying, I can't stand it. I, uh, the whole race of waiting for something to go wrong, now he's on again, and of course he's faced with the possibility of running the next two races up at the front, and whilst it's not bad in one way, uh, you're always in the highest of hopes if you're out in front. And of course, if something does go wrong, it seems even more cruel. So with eight laps to go, Costanzo out in front, doing absolutely beautifully. That's second place, Larry Perkins. Uh, but in the pits, Alan Hamilton, his team sponsor and, and the owner of the car, chewing his fingernails right down to the quick, I would say, <laughs> wondering if everything's going to stay okay in that car. This would be, without a doubt, the best Formula 5000 car running in Australia. Without a doubt. As Alfie Costanzo describes it, it's, it's the Rolls-Royce of Formula 5000 racing. 
And it's interesting to think that he managed to stay out in front of uh, the Formula One machinery and also, of course, hold off that challenge by Warwick Brown for so long because so many people, when they heard Formula One cars were coming to Australia, predicted a complete demolishment of the local 5,000 field. In fact, it hasn't happened, and so far, a Formula One car hasn't led a race. Now, Alfie Costanzo with the chequered flag in sight, leading the race now from Larry Perkins and Johnny Walker. And behind them, car number one, Graham McRae, very much by default, but nevertheless up in fourth place, and he'll be very pleased with that, because at the moment he's got Salt Walter's car in his own, neither of them running competitively, and the team pretty unhappy with the engines they have. In behind McRae, again, an outstandingly good job being done by Rob Butcher, the South Australian restorer of historic racing cars in car number 10. He's in fifth place, and in sixth place behind him is Chaz Talbot, in car number four. So there's some unlikely people coming up there into major placings. And this, in fact, was exactly what Colin Bond said. He said, this race could go quite well for me because he said, everything's gone so badly, I wouldn't expect anything to be right. And uh, if I just get out and drive oh, around. We've got a moment at the end of this coming back towards the oval. It's impossible, obviously, to pick out that car. Driver is out of the car. Someone has hit pretty hard. Done a tricky job to get in behind the Armco fencing there, around as they come onto the banking. And Rob Butcher, that appears. I oh, beg your pardon, Charles Talbot, I think. Yes, Charles Charlie Talbot. Talbot. He is Charles Talbot. So he was in sixth place. A man who could so well have done with the money. Very much a privateer. And. Um, the end of the race for him when in sixth place and in sight of some very useful prize money in fact fifteen hundred dollars the other interest is that johnny walker has got past larry perkins johnny walker car 25 is past larry perkins in car number 12 and is up into second position now with alf costanzo still quite untroubled since hitting the lead on the seventh lap he's in top position this is john wright in car number 76 a car that he was certain wasn't going to go the distance but wright is uh, in fact, going quite well. He's been, he blown four head gaskets in two weekends and said that Sandown last weekend with crown wheel and pinion failure, gearbox failure and engine failure cost him $5,000. But he looks as though he may pick up some prize money now. And that's the race situation, as you can see, with the 50-lap race very rapidly coming to a finish with lap times of around the 50-second mark, less than five seconds, uh, five minutes from the end for Costanzo in 84. Well, if Alfie Costanzo gets to the finish and picks up his second successive race, he goes to a total of 20 points in the series. It's based on 10 down to one in the first three races and 15 down to one in the final race at Oran Park on February 25. Two wins with the way the cars are having so many troubles and the hot shots, the Kennedys, the Lees, the Browns and the McCrays are failing to pick up points. Uh, so far has Costanzo in an almost unassailable position. Particularly, Jim, as the ones that came in behind him at Sandown are all out of points contention. That was Lees in second place, Kennedy third, Bartlett fourth, Schupin fifth, Richards sixth. None of those are going to get points this time. So the only one likely to get points is Larry Perkins, who picked up four points at Sandown and is at present on eight yeah. points here, would give him 12 as opposed to Costanzo's 20. Then Graham McRae and Terry Hook and Butcher all got some points at Sandown. So Costanzo will have about a 12-point margin, and that at only a point between each placing is a very big margin indeed. I think we've said this before, but if uh, motor racing was a betting sport, everybody, including the bookmakers, would go broke. It's the most incredible sport for um, misadventures and unexpected things to go wrong. But so far, everything is going right for Alfredo Costanzo and also for Johnny Walker in car 25 running in second position and he's done a remarkable job on a track of course he knows like the back of his hand being an Adelaide driver uh, has always performed well here he's too far back to seriously challenge Costanzo Costanzo now well inside of the finish just threading his way through the slower cars and uh, in case you've Missed it before, Warwick Brown has retired. The two Formula One cars of Lees and Kennedy are both out. Colin Bond is out. And a whole list of other drivers have had a wide varieties of, of problems. 
including the unfortunate American Salt Walther, for whom nothing will go right in this series. Costanzo is about to commence his final lap. He's completed 49, he's out on his final. Alf Costanzo now almost assured of victory, barring some cruel stroke of fate. And it was a fairly cruel one that took victory from him at Sandown, only three laps from the end a year ago. So, um, in the, the ways of the vagaries, as you were saying, Jim, of motorsport, something could happen. Let's watch him on this final lap as he goes on his winning way and have a look at the winning lines that he's been taking around the circuit as he comes through Shell into the Uni Royal S's. Lines up then to come onto this reverse camber BP corner. Keeps it in tight, sacrifices that corner somewhat to get onto Goodyear corner motorcraft. The banking quickly comes round onto motorcraft corner, the first part of the real banking. Then to Stillwell, the chequered flag awaits him and it's Alfie Costanzo, second victory in two weekends. And again, a very, very well-deserved one for him and for the Porsche Cars Australia team, his sponsor, as we look at Johnny Walker now making his way to the finish. He's coming up through Shell into the Uni Royal S's. Same way, and this gives you an idea of the gap between the two cars. A fine drive from 36-year-old Johnny Walker, the same age as Costanzo. So uh, a bit of age and experience counts for a lot in motor racing. Johnny Walker into the banking, coming round for second place. Larry Perkins will not be far behind him, although the next car to finish will be Jim Richards, actually, car number nine. Jim is still percolating despite a pit stop. He comes over the start-finish line as we watch Costanzo co cooling down around the back of the circuit and another finely judged, skillfully driven race from the pint-sized and uh, very lovable Italian-born Melbourne resident, Alf Costanzo, a very likeable chap. No pretense about him at all. Last week, people, were, the Formula One boys were talking about, I need more wing and I need more time to sort this, that and the other. And Alf in his uh, lovely Italian accent said, they are too scientific for me. I just get in and drive. And he's done that uh, absolutely superbly two weekends in a row. Hilarious. He'll be so delighted, Alfie Costanzo. He's a terribly emotional little man. All eight and a half stone of him. And uh, getting out of his car, he'll be drenched with perspiration. And he always claims that he loses something like a half a stone. It's impossible to believe when you look at him there uh, in a race of this type, particularly uh, on a hot day. And boy, has it been hot today. Well over the century. Now, Alfie Costanzo being congratulated. It'll be a little bit on the deaf side after that effort, despite earplugs. Johnny Walker in runner-up position and Larry Perkins, uh, another South Australian driver, in third position. And, and next Sunday, of course, we have round three of the Rothmans International Series at Surfers Paradise. The point score, as we're working it out here, is Costanzo has 20. Larry Perkins will be second place in the series with his third position in that race. And uh, last weekend, taking out seventh place, he has 12. Graham McRae will have 10. Jeff Lees, the Englishman, nine. And Johnny Walker, second place today, also nine. And we'll bring you the rest as we work them out. And Bob Vincent down there now to, uh, for the presentation to Alf Costanzo. So Alf Costanzo going up to the stand for his second, for his second successive win in a row and uh, taking second place Johnny Walker, third Larry Perkins. A, a very, very popular driver and a very, very happy little man, Alfie Costanzo. And uh, what, a, what a great comeback it has been for him after last year's uh, series. So next week, ABC will be taking you to Surfers Paradise for the third heat of the Rothmans International, uh, Rothmans International Series. It will be live on ABC television. And until then, it's goodbye from Adelaide International Raceway from ABC Sport.